Hello and welcome to our webinar on how to set up your Dexcom G5 touchscreen receiver. My name is Michelle. I'm a certified diabetes educator here at Dexcom. And today I'm going to be walking through how to set up your receiver step by step. So just as a reminder, your Dexcom G5 system provides you with two options in terms of display devices that you can choose from to view your glucose. You can either just use the Dexcom G5 touchscreen receiver that came with your system, or you can use a compatible smart device. You can also use both the G5 touchscreen receiver and the smart device at the same exact time. You can even interchange between the two. So for example, you could use your smart device during the day and your receiver at night or vice versa. And we have a list of compatible smart devices on our website at Dexcom.com. But in this webinar, we are going to focus on how to set up the G5 touchscreen receiver. So to turn your receiver on for the very first time, you're going to press and hold down on the power button at the bottom of the device for about two seconds. This will result in the display of a loading screen. The loading screen will disappear on its own within about 15 seconds and then display a welcome or introduction screen. When you see this, tap on the word OK and this will result in a series of setup screens. One of the first setup screens here will ask you to set the date and the time. The date will be displayed as the year, the month, and the day. So to edit any one individual field, just simply tap on that field so that you highlight it in green, and then tap the up and down arrow symbol to edit that highlighted field. So if, for example, you want to edit the year, you'll tap on the field for year so that it's highlighted in green, and then tap the up and down arrow symbol to edit that year or to find the correct year. Once you've entered in the correct date and time, the receiver will then ask you to enter your transmitter serial number. So your transmitter is a very small gray rectangular piece that comes in a different box than the box that your receiver came in. Your transmitter will come in a very small white and green box that will have a photo of the transmitter on the outside of it. Now each and every transmitter gets assigned its own unique serial number that you can find either on the very back of the transmitter itself or on a white sticker located on the back of the transmitter box. Your transmitter serial number is a series of six letters and numbers that starts with the number four and you need to enter this number into your receiver so that way your receiver knows specifically which transmitter it needs to communicate with. Once you've entered in your transmitter serial number, the receiver will ask you to set your low and high alert, or the level at which you want to be alerted for a high or a low glucose. Now when setting your low alert, you may want to consider setting it just slightly higher than what you consider a hypoglycemic episode to be. That will help ensure that the Dexcom really does what it's intended to do, which is to alert you right at the beginning of that hypoglycemic episode, before it gets too severe. When setting your high alert, some people choose to set it at the upper limit of their target glucose range at let's say 180 or 200. However, others feel that that might be alerting them too often and they choose to set their high alert at a much higher level. Uh, for example, a level at which they might consider taking a correction dose of insulin. But once you've set your high and low alert, it will then bring you to the receiver home screen where you will see a start sensor option. At this point in the receiver setup, do not tap start sensor. You must first insert a sensor and transmitter onto your skin before selecting start sensor. Another item you may notice on the receiver home screen is a flashing or blinking Bluetooth symbol in the upper left-hand corner. 
So your receiver will use Bluetooth technology to communicate with the transmitter that will eventually be on your skin. But at this point in the receiver setup, you should then go ahead and set your receiver sounds or the type of alert or sound that you want your receiver to make when your glucose is too high or too low. To do this, you'll tap on the main menu icon, which is represented by three dashed lines in the upper left-hand corner of the receiver home screen. When you tap on the main menu icon, it may then ask you to tap the displayed numbers one and then two to access the menu options. But once you've accessed the main menu, tap on the option of sound so that you can see a list of sounds that you can choose from. One of the first sounds you can choose from is vibrate. And this means that your receiver would vibrate every five minutes until you clear or silence the alert. The one exception to that with a sound of vibrate is if your glucose hits the urgent low alert of 55, the first alert will be a vibration, but if you miss that vibration and don't clear it, it will result in an audible beep five minutes later. The next sound you can choose from is soft. This is one of the more quieter or discrete tones. The next one is normal, which is a little bit louder. And the next one is attentive, which is the loudest sound you can pick. The last option you can pick from is hypo repeat. This is a similar tone to normal. The only difference is if your glucose hits that urgent low of 55, you will get an alert every five seconds as opposed to every five minutes until you clear or silence the alert. So to pick the sound that you want, you'll simply tap on it to create a check mark next to it. You can then tap try it to sample that sound. Now the way you will clear or silence an alert on your receiver is you will tap the word OK that displays on the screen when you're having a high or a low alert. Now, in terms of how the receiver alerts will work, it's very important for you to note that the very first alert you get when you have a high or a low glucose will always be a vibration only, regardless of what sound you select here. It's only if you miss that vibration and don't clear that alert that it will then result in that sound that you've selected here in this alert sound menu. But once you've selected your alert sound, you can then go ahead and proceed with a sensor insertion. Now again, in this webinar, we are focusing on how to set up the receiver. But if you're interested in watching a video on how to perform a sensor insertion, you should check our website for the Getting Started or Mini Insertion webinar. But once you've inserted a sensor and transmitter onto your skin, Within 10 minutes, that flashing or blinking Bluetooth symbol in the upper left-hand corner, it should stop flashing and become solid. This indicates that your receiver has successfully paired with that transmitter on your skin, or that your receiver and your transmitter are communicating. So your receiver, it can only pair with a transmitter that's been snapped into a sensor pod onto your skin. So once that Bluetooth symbol becomes solid or stops flashing, you can then go ahead and tap Start Sensor. But again, you wanna make sure you wait up to 10 minutes after inserting a sensor and transmitter onto your skin for that Bluetooth symbol to stop flashing and become solid before you select Start Sensor. But once you tap Start Sensor, that will launch what is known as the two-hour warm-up, which is represented by a little pie chart in the upper right-hand corner. So every time you insert a new sensor into your skin every seven days, it is always going to go through this two-hour warm-up where you will not see any glucose readings and you will not get any alerts. At the completion of the two-hour warm-up, it will ask you to perform your first two calibrations. Now, what we mean by calibrate is you have to check a finger stick on your glucometer and manually enter it into your receiver. This is called a calibration. And you have to perform two consecutive calibrations at the completion of the two-hour warm-up. 
So to do this, you'll tap on the word OK on that calibration prompt, check a finger stick on your glucometer, and manually enter it into your receiver. Now you're going to repeat that process a second time, meaning you're going to check another finger stick on your glucometer and manually enter it into your receiver. Once you enter in those first two calibrations, your receiver will then display a glucose reading on your receiver home screen. Now you need to continue to calibrate your Dexcom once every 12 hours in order to maintain the accuracy on the system. So just to clarify, it's only a single finger stick or a single calibration that you have to perform every 12 hours as opposed to the two consecutive calibrations that you have to perform at the completion of that two hour warm up. And your receiver will provide you with a calibration prompt every 12 hours, letting you know that you're due for that calibration. Now, just some tips if you are planning on using both the receiver and the smart device at the same exact time, is you should only calibrate one device. The calibration will get shared with the other device within about five minutes. Now, when you get an alert, such as an alert for a high or a low glucose, you will get the alert on both devices and you will then have to clear or silence the alert on both devices separately. Now your receiver needs to be periodically recharged approximately every one to two days. And you can recharge your receiver in a wall outlet using the USB charging cable and power adapter that came with your system in that receiver box. Now every time you charge your receiver, you will get a speaker test prompt. So if you, and that's asking you if you want to test your speakers or make sure that your speakers are working properly. So if you want to test your speakers at that time, just tap test now, and you should make sure that you hear an audible alert and feel a vibration on that receiver. If for some odd reason you do not hear an audible alert, tap no and contact technical support. Now, one last tidbit of information that we want to provide to you today pertains to Dexcom Clarity. So Clarity is the reporting software that you and your physician can use to retrospectively review all of that Dexcom data that it's been collecting over time. And Clarity helps you and your physician focus on the detection of your glucose trends and patterns so that much more targeted and effective adjustments can be made in your treatment regimen. Now your receiver has the capability of displaying the most recent 24 hours of glucose information, but it's actually saving and storing the most recent 30 days. So to upload that information that's being stored on your receiver into Clarity, you should go to Clarity's website at clarity.dexcom.com. There you can follow the instructions, attach your receiver to the computer using the USB charging cable, upload your information, and then review your Clarity reports. Great, so that completes our webinar for today. Thank you so much for joining us. We encourage you to check our website for additional webinars that we offer. For example, we offer webinars that demonstrate a sensor insertion. We also offer webinars that provide additional detail on Dexcom Clarity, including how you can share your Clarity reports with your physician. And I'm part of the patient care department. We are a group of diabetes educators here to provide you with training, answer your questions, and provide you with ongoing support. So if you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. We look forward to supporting you, and thank you for joining our webinar.